Today we are on the brilliance of the seas and we are discussing how to thrive as a solo traveler and how you can make those connections. I have nearly 40 cruises under my belt, including solo adventures. I know one of the biggest questions for solo travelers is, will I feel alone amidst a sea of people? Join me as I share how to connect, make friends, and ensure your solo trip is just as enriching and enjoyable as any other. Let's look at how you can make connections at sea. Let's get started. Traveling solo can be a bit nerve wracking as far as meeting people. The idea of meeting a bunch of new people or stepping out of your comfort zone make you feel like you wouldn't even attempt to do solo travel. Well, I'll show you what exactly I did to ensure that I had a good time on the ship. Obviously, the first thing you need to do is venture out of your room. That would be the, the first step. And then from there, you just have to be brave. You don't necessarily need to hang out at the bars and you can just have a good time even if you are solo traveling. Let's go. As a solo traveler, you might wonder how to fill your days, especially with the leisurely pace of life on board. But here's the secret. The more you participate, the more you'll discover your place in this floating community. Dance classes bring people together. There's the energy of the gym. Each activity is a chance to meet like-minded travelers. And let's not forget the karaoke nights or various activities led by the enthusiastic staff. These are your gateways to forming lasting connections. The days at sea are intentionally designed to be less hectic. It's a time to unwind and just gaze at the ocean and find peace in the vastness of your surroundings. If relaxation isn't your only pursuit, remember, pack a deck of cards, pack your favorite book or journal. You can bask in the sun or even enjoy the spa. So here we are on day one. I just finished the morning AM stretch and fitness class. Unlike um, Princess where they do a dance fitness every day, this particular line mixes it with fitness. It's all done in the center of the ship, but it's not a dance class every day. They will have a merengue class later today. I'll just keep doing any exercise because that's what I like to do. I guess people have been doing the paid classes. There's an abs class, Pilates, there's spin, um, some type of a stretching, yoga, but all those are for at cost. You can meet people in the most unlikely I had an interesting conversation in the elevator. Thank you, A couple um, didn't like the name that tune because they said it was Christmas carols and it was too too difficult for them. <laughs> Another couple I met were talking about joining a gym because after this cruise people feel like they need to get in better shape. But again, it's like fleeting conversations, but it's enough to keep you connected. It's really super easy to meet people. I was showing you the dance warm-up class and I happened to end up joining that. When I left, you, know, you go into the elevator, I mean, you start talking to people that were in the class, and then you see them later in the afternoon because there's another 1.30 um, dance fitness. So if you get into something, whether it's pickleball, I don't know, any other kind of activity. It's always super easy to strike up conversations with people at the railings here. I think this is this commonalities of what's going on. I was just talking to someone just now about the weather and how, how crazy it is from Honolulu weather. So you just talk to people all around the place. Sail away, whatever it is. When you're on here for so many days, it's like a neighborhood. And you just get to know your neighborhood and what people are doing and you just start recognizing people and saying hello. I mean, some people are outgoing and they'll talk to you and others aren't, but the workers are generally very friendly and they get bored and they just want to strike up conversations because they're bored. So it's, um, it, it's been fun in that respect. Like I say, it's really funny to stand here. You saw that I got interrupted by a dolphin sighting. Well, that just brought in a whole section of people and I ended up talking to this man who was uh, with his wife from Georgia. And they are, we were just talking about what we did and how we have enjoyed the trip. And he was telling me how he had rented a car in Auckland for $50 for the day and drove all around to some wine country. 
And so, you know, you learn information by talking to people. And it was just a nice conversation. And he was all, he's all set to move to New Zealand now. He just loved it so much. He really liked the Bay of Islands. And I can tell you, it is, it is like a untouched area. And they're very environmentally conscious, beautiful place. But anyway, as far as meeting people, that's how you do it. It's just all within the context of the situation. So there's nothing to be worried about or fearful of because you won't feel by yourself. I know. I mean, this is 17, 18 days. It's a long cruise. I mean, I'm kind of ready to get off, but at the same time, oh, I just saw a, um, a whale over here. It just, it just jumped up. Oh my goodness. Oh, I probably won't, I'll, or maybe it was a dolphin. It's right there. In the middle of nowhere. Oh, there he is. It started from here. It's moving, obviously, because we're moving. Maybe we're just moving. So now it's going to be further that way, huh? Well, I don't know if we, that was it for us on that. It's interesting, it's just one. You would think there'd be more, you know? So you'll find that if you don't make an effort to get to know people, they will just leave you be, and that's fine. There's a lot of families here with lots of people, couples, extended families. Um, I would say that the crowd is, is generally a bit older because it's a long cruise. Now, like, as far as solo travel, I enjoyed the Caribbean when I was stopping every other day and, like, you're getting out and doing things. This has been a little different. I'm on day six at sea, so, you know, you have to really make an effort to keep yourself amused because there may not be enough going on for you. A lot of times it's hard to find uh, things going on, but you just have to read your either on your app, the Times, or look at the, ask for a copy of the hard copy and then your stateroom attendant will deliver that to you. So there's a big pickleball contest going on here. I haven't got into this scene, but that probably would be fun. I don't know what you, you know, what you what you want to do, but there are people are reading here, just relaxing, amusing themselves. As the sun sets, the brilliance of the sea transforms. The bars become lively hubs of conversation. The centrum area is filled with the sounds of music, laughter from games, and the rhythm of dancing. In these moments, you're more than just another traveler. You're part of a lively group of people, and each has their own unique story and experience. So it's easy to mingle, share a laugh, or even just enjoy the atmosphere around you. This ship is a place where every evening offers a chance to be part of fun and make new connections. There is a nightly gathering at the Vintages Bar, which is a perfect spot for unhosted meetups. There is a four o'clock meetup at the Vintages Bar, and that has started since the beginning of the cruise. So a lot of people have met up there and have connected. And I noticed they have a get together at 10 at night too for the LGBTQ community as well. So every night there's someone meeting up in the Vintages Bar. You know, sometimes I've been on cruises where they've had actual built boards where you can post unhosted events, like say you're looking for a bridge partner or you need to have someone to play a certain card game. They, I've seen that um, in, on other ships, but I have not noticed that here in this particular ship because the library really isn't a library. It's just a bookcase full of books and there's chairs outside, so it's not an official library. So there are games to pull out and play. So you might want to bring your own cards or something like that. And of course, there's always shopping. You can talk to the shopkeepers and talk about what good sales there are or what's happening happening there. I mean, these are all just minimal conversations to get you through your day, but to think that you're on a trip where it's so solo that you're like lonely or unhappy or feeling like you have no one to even interact with is not the case at all. As you can see from my examples, I mean, you can just run into people all over the place. And for solo travelers seeking a pre-planned group, Cruise Critic Com offers a roster program, which is an excellent resource to connect before setting sail. It's easy to fit in here. You're part of a big group of people, each with their own story. Shore excursions are also a, a way of connecting. You'll be surprised at the seasoned travelers you'll meet and each 
has a fascinating story and lots of insights to share. So as you watch this journey unfold, remember that every corner of this ship, every activity is a chance to be part of something bigger, to create memories and to enjoy solo travel. Every moment is an invitation to connect, explore, and simply be. As crazy as it sounds, you could meet people in the most unlikely places, like here at the after the ship. Had a great conversation with a few people about Australia and about whales. And you were really friendly and nice. Just because they sat near me, and then we were there. Was, someone saw a whale, and then we all looked outside, and so. That was, that was exciting for that reason. So, you know, then you see them around the ship and you say hello and there you go. So just the app to the ship here at the buffet area. And also too, you run into sometimes the dining staff from the night before. In the main dining room, they work in the buffet. The assistant waiters work here too in the daytime. So you get to see people you know, like my guy, he's here all the time. So he's even serving me coffee. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, so that was nice. Like last night I ate at Izumi's and I ran into the other waiters at Park Cafe earlier in the morning and they recognized them. So people, they do multiple jobs around here. So that's kind of fun to uh, see different people. You know, you, you wouldn't expect that. So that's how you can connect to uh, just because you see them uh, around. I think I ended up going to the gym more this time because the fitness wasn't really aerobic enough for me. But, I mean, you know, you do what you want to do, I guess. Spa ladies are good at their job, they're good at what they do. They do try to sell things to you, but you just have to say no and they accept it. They don't push it too much, so. Casino was busy, but not too busy. I mean, you could find a spot. If you had a favorite machine, you probably could find it. There are nine bars on board and they were pretty busy most of the time. Sports areas are always good places to go to, too. A lot of times they're looking for teams for pickleball. They just join a few teams. Some people are in groups, but others aren't, and you get to know people this way. I don't, I've never played pickleball. It looks like fun though. Also, there's rock climbing over here, and that's another way if you're working on this with another person next to you, you kind of are talking to them. So that's, that's always fun. Because as you're waiting in line to play a game, or you want to do mini golf over here, strike up conversations with people, and you're able to just talk about whatever's going on at the moment. And then you just run into these people later on. So entering in the back way from the rock climbing wall, you can enter the Sequest area. And this is kind of exclusive for Diamond members, but it is open to the general public. I am a Diamond member, and I haven't spent much time up here, but I get the impression they want to kind of keep this sheltered to the rest of the public but it is open to the public at certain hours. It's kind of like a dress code standard and they want to make it like an elite thing but it really isn't. The reason why it was closed is there's a private function going on here. Pinnacle maybe. There's always that opportunity to talk to people if you're a Diamond Club member. They put out hors d'oeuvres in the um, evening like a happy hour and you can talk to various people up here. This is a good place to come and just hang out and mingle. Yeah, I think after 10 or 11 at night it, it becomes the dance club with the DJ. But um, during the daytime it's just a place to hang out. And again, you strike a conversation, talk to whoever you'd like. You just never know, you know, I mean, that's if people are willing to want to talk or whatever. I noticed there was a, a couple of people practicing ballroom dancing up there, so they're utilizing that space for their dancing, and they had a little, like a boom box that they brought, and they were had music with it, and they were just doing their own thing. So people start being creative with what they like to do. So just think about your favorite activity, and you might want to bring it with you. Or some people just choose to unplug and just relax. It's solo or not, it's as social as you want it to be. And of course there's always shopping. You can talk to the shopkeepers and talk about what good sales there are or what's happening there. I mean, these are all just minimal conversations to get you through your day. But to think that you're on a trip where it's so solo that you're like lonely or unhappy or feeling like you have no one to even interact with is not the case at all. You can just run into people all over the place. It's just, it's
it's just easy. I keep saying that, but it's really true. I mean, one day you may feel like being super social, the next day you may feel like you don't want to be, and that's fine. What I've noticed with this crowd, and because maybe, I don't know, I don't know if Americans are just more talkative. You almost have to make a gesture of, of, of saying something first, and once you do that, then people respond back. But if you don't say anything, then they may not say anything. And, I, and it's, it's, it's interesting because I could say like a comment about the weather, comment about any, I don't know, just what, whatever the situation is, but if, if you don't say it first, I think they're just trying to be polite and they don't want to bother you or you know intrude in your thoughts or whatever. But, but, if, but if you just make an overt effort to say something first, it just breaks the ice a bit. It's really easy to make conversation around food or just what people are doing. So I'm at one of the coveted seats of the wicker chairs in the aft of the ship. It's so cold today that people aren't sitting outside because I brought the best sweat, I mean a jacket and a scarf, I can handle it. I just wanted to say that um, it's fun in the afternoon, late afternoon we were um, doing some the samba dancing because we have, because we have a few Brazilian activity people on board and that was really fun. And then I just came to my buffet and I ran into the, my assistant waiter guy. Who, I mean, there's always people you can connect with. I even saw this speaker walking around in the buffet line. This is it's like a it's like a little city on the water. It's been a great time. And, and as far as worrying about who you're gonna run into or talk to or whatever, honestly, you're your own worst enemy. You worry about that because if this is going to happen, just luckily, you know, you'll run into people that are fun to talk to and you might even hang out with. So it's really what you make it. Um, you just have to kind of be open to it. But this is a really good area to sit in. Like I said, over here, there's spot and you can just talk or not. But I spent a lot of time back here and then when it was really warm. It's really nice because the sun comes in and it's just kind of a lazy uh, enclosed space. It's hard to find these seats, but I'm excited that they're here today. I had met a lady that was doing needlepoint, so I was talking to her about that. I met another lady that was knitting, and in another section I met a couple of ladies drawing. I also had a conversation with someone over here about living a nomadic lifestyle because they were just traveling all over the place. So you just never know who you're going to be talking to. Her chairs, I was able to run into some ladies that she was um, needlepoint and making a really beautiful little picture and I, we started to talk a bit and there's other ladies that were doing knitting. I ran into a woman that was um, drawing, and a sketching something and then of course there's the people that play card games but generally you can just ask to join a table and the solarium it's kind of like premium real estate hard to get a, um, a table or I mean a chair uh, until after 4 30 once 4 30 hits everybody kind of leaves and does their own thing for dinner so it's, it's easier it's great to come here to the solarium it's just right now it's a little rough flies out of the pool area so it's kind of gets kind of dangerous things get kind of wet it's so nice and warm in this solarium but this is a good spot to to meet people because you just sit down and you can say hello see where it goes i was just noticing a lady over here she was knitting this morning there's people doing all kinds of things sketching drawing reading computer work it's just a working station here it's almost like a library so you can see people are just relaxing and reading and these chairs are kind of close so if you get next to someone you generally are going to say something our cafe is a good spot to strike up a conversation I had an interesting experience in the park cafe today um, along the window but people sometimes will take the two chairs from one table and add them to their own table and then they'll leave a table that has no chairs so I went up to someone and said are you using these four chairs because you're just by yourself here I was wondering can I have one of the chairs she says oh no we're waiting for someone so I guess that area is kind of like the coveted um, lounge chairs in the solarium it's hard to come by so I had to basically take my food and go find somewhere to sit to um, it was just a light snack but still it's just the idea that I think they shouldn't allow that I think people should just keep their tables for two because that's what that's supposed to be and that way um, it's fair to everybody and then I asked a guy 
was he using the chair and he said he was waiting for someone, but then I came back five minutes later and he was gone. I remember that I wanted to join him or something, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> anyway, the things that you run into, this is interesting. Daytime, it's going to be sunny and hot, and sometimes there will be an empty seat, say for example here, and I'm joining someone because there's nowhere else to sit, so then you end up talking to people. But I met a lady, a couple ladies here, they were sharing, uh, they're sketching with me, their drawings. So it was fun to kind of talk to them a bit. So that was a, a good way to talk to people. Easy or as difficult as you make it. I think focusing in on what other people are doing, that's if you're even interested in doing that. Maybe you just want to pull up a book and read and then that's fine too. The app buffet area that I'm showing you with the wicker chairs, there was also a group there, some of ladies. I guess they all had read the same book and they were doing like a book club. So I was wondering what book they were reading, so I went and asked them. And that was an interesting conversation too. So, you know, it can be anywhere about anything. Inevitably, you will find someone to talk to at the coffee place. As you wait for your coffee, it can take a bit of time. So you just want to talk to people, see what's going on with their day. He brought me my, my coffee. And there it is. Samba class, I, you end up dancing solo and then you do partnering at the end and so I was with this lady and she said, oh aren't you the lady that likes to dance? I go, yeah I like to dance. I said, I've been doing all the dance classes. She goes, no, but you dance every night with your husband. And I said, no. She said, where is your husband? I said, no, I'm here by myself. I didn't come with my husband. He doesn't dance, so um, I like to dance, but that's just, you know, I mean he'd like to dance, but he just doesn't dance. But she was insistent that I was this lady that she's been seeing around the ship dancing with her husband and she's tall and looks like me apparently, but I, I haven't seen this person. I don't know who it is. It is funny how people identify you as uh, certain things when they're not even, you know, it's not even true. So it's just amusing. Again, you, you just talk to people because you're in a situation of common interest. That's what it is. I mean, cruising is like kind of its own little subculture. You got all kinds of things happening all around you and it's just a matter of figuring out where you fit. We had an interactive Beatles show tonight and generally when you're sitting in the theater waiting for a show, you can just strike up a conversation with somebody about maybe where they're from or whatever they've been up to. If they're up for, for chatting, um, you know, you can assess that kind of feel that out and generally when you have interactive shows and people are up and dancing everybody's having a good time so it, it's just fun and it just makes you feel included and you get to know people and then eventually you're gonna see them later like I saw the activities girl today she was checking in the show or greeting people and I was asking her about the dance uh, classes for tomorrow so you know you start to get to know people and before you know it you're just kind of finding your your lane here so to speak. It's always hard on the last day because you feel so, it's kind of sad, you know, you get to know these people and you think, oh wow, I'll never probably see them again. And, um, but it's been a great time. I would highly recommend this cruise if you like to relax and read and just kind of, you know, just be involved with the ship activities. If you're a person that doesn't like to mingle, you can do that too, but you might want to not get an interior room because I find myself with the interior room I'm wanting to always leave because it's so, um, you know, it's interior, there's no, no light, there's no natural light, so you have no idea what's going on unless you turn on your TV and you can see the um, front of the ship and I show you the weather and what it looks like outside. I am out and about most of the time. So as you can see, there's plenty to do on this ship, plenty of people to meet, meet as many, talk to as many, you won't feel lonely. It's, it's quite um, easy to just pick up conversations wherever you go. Just anywhere, really. It's just you, you run into people, you have a little bit snippets of conversation, and that's that, that makes the time go by, and it doesn't feel like you're all by yourself. So, and meeting people is, is fairly easy, and 
it's nothing to be intimidated about so I just wanted to throw that out there because I know I've heard from people that they say oh I don't know how you could do that that would be so weird or so strange but it, honestly really it is it's just it's what you make it so that in mind and you know of course if you really want to get to know people like at a, a, a different level then you'd want to show up these meet and greets or I'm not sure how that works exactly but I've heard about that and there's probably other things going on that I don't even know about so if anybody has any information about solo travel and how people um, connect just please let me know in the comments that would be helpful but I hope this has helped you and encouraged you to maybe take that trip on your own and check out what the world has to offer it's quite an experience and I would recommend it and I do um, hope that this has been helpful or informative and if you've learned something please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I do have a playlist on the brilliance of the seas and everything I did and where I went, the Trans-Pacific. It's a beautiful area of the world. It's really um, something I've never experienced before and, and I'm really happy to say that it's, it's been a great time. So uh, again, um, thank you so much for watching and until next time.